When I was asked to introduce Fred today, I was extremely honored. Fred is a co-convener of Performing the World and founder of its sponsors, the Osas Project and the Isa Institute. You see, all the big dogs get to introduce Fred. <laughs> and I thought, wow, Fred thinks I'm a big dog. Now that's big. I asked why. And Madeline said, Madeline, the producer of the conference, says, well, Fred wants to be introduced by someone who knows him. And I accepted with a big grin on my face. Later, I thought, do I really know Fred? I mean, I've known him for over 12 years. I've spoken to him many times. But do I really know who Fred is? We don't go to clubs together. <laughs> I used to write raps. He wrote plays. I'm from Brooklyn, he's from the Bronx. <laughs> you know? Fred likes baseball. I know how it's played. <laughs> and, <laughs> and obviously enough, I'm black, he's Jewish. <laughs> so I asked myself, what would Fred say? Maybe something like, Antoine, why do you have to know anything? Maybe you should give up knowing, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure you have a more developed statement, but it gave me something to talk to you about Fred today. See, I grew up in a single parent home with three brothers in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn. I lived on an all black block in an all black neighborhood and I attended all black schools. The only white people I knew were my teachers and the officers, police officers I would encounter from time to time. In my all-black junior high school, I was smart enough to be in an excelled learning class, which allowed me to go from the seventh to the ninth grade in one year. I was 12 years old, and so I didn't think much of it. You know, I was smart, always been smart. At least, it was, at least that's what my black teachers told me. And now I was entering 10th grade, and for the first time, I wasn't going to be in an all-black school. So I had to face a bigger world. Everything was different about this high school I was going to. The school was still in Brooklyn, but it was an hour away from where I lived. I've never been anywhere that far by myself. See, my grade school was across the street from my, where I lived, and my junior high school was like a short bus ride from where I lived. But this high school was way in the middle of Brooklyn, near a white Jewish neighborhood, near a college. It was all different. And even though I tried to take it in, I couldn't. The school was 80% white, largely Russian and Jewish, I guess. Black students was less than 3%. And I was accepted to their gifted program, in which I was the only black student in my class. And still, I, and I wasn't the smart kid there. In fact, compared to the other students, I probably didn't even belong. So all my teachers were white. And the only friends I had was this one Hispanic kid and this one Asian kid, if you can imagine the threesome of us. <laughs> uh, you know, we all felt like outsiders, but I particularly felt it the most. See, my teachers would treat me differently because I would come to class with um, dark shades on. They thought I was using drugs because of my dark shades and my irregular grade patterns. They were surprised that my mother worked and she was off welfare for a year. See, I was not ready for any of this, so I failed every class in 10th grade. Cutting class became a constant um, habit of mine. I found myself wanting to seek out gangs in my neighborhood. So for the 11th grade, I went back to an all-black school in my neighborhood, three blocks away from where I lived. Now, I tell you all this story because this is where my life changed. My cousins went to this school. Um, boys and Girls High School, and I like that. They were the popular kids at Boys and Girls because they can dance. And now that I was closer to them, I was able to join their dance group. And dancing with my cousins meant two things. One, popularity, yes. And two, the all-stars. So now, I'm one of the members of the hot dance group, and I'm performing in all-star shows. Now that's huge. Now, the All-Stars had white people working with them, and we would see them at the shows, but see, they were the cool white people. 
Yeah. They weren't the ones in our schools or on the streets. There was no judgments about what I wore or how I wore it. No one accused me of being on drugs, and it didn't matter what my mother's welfare status was. And then one day, we met the <laughs> coolest white guy of them all. <laughs> See, it happened like this. Pam Lewis, director of youth programs for the All Stars Project, she would frequently call my group and access to special guests for talent shows, and we loved doing that. That's how we learned how to travel in New York City. And one day she would call us and to perform at a conference, something, something like this. <laughs> and I remember when, I got the, when we got the call, my cousin picked up the phone and said, Pam's on the phone. And we was in the hall, we all ran to the phone. <laughs> and we listened to him, what's she saying, what's she saying? She's got a show for us, it's like, great. And we would all just run to hear what she had to say, but you know, it didn't really matter what she had to say. It was the All-Stars calling. And this time she had tokens and dinner, so it's great. <laughs> but at the conference, there was hundreds of people, just like this. And after we performed, this tall white man was introduced to the stage. This guy had spunk. As we enjoyed our free sandwiches from the back of the auditorium, you know, he'll walk back and forth this, in front of the stage, and he'll be saying stuff with so much passion, and people would cheer, yeah! And then he would say something again and he would finish with, fuck that! <laughs> and everybody would just get on their feet and cheer, yeah, yeah! And we thought, wow, he's the coolest white guy ever. <laughs> well, we were right. Fred Newman is the coolest white guy ever. He's a philosopher, a therapist, a writer, a director, and a hell of an organizer. Years ago, before my days of performing on any stage, <laughs> do it again. <laughs> Years ago, before my days of performing on any stage, he created a movement that later, among many, many other things, created the program that changed my life, the All Stars Project. He motivated a small grouping of revolutionaries who stood on street corners and knocked on door after door so that my cousins and I could run to that phone and say yes when we got the call. Happy tears. He guided the All-Stars leadership, who later became my life mentors, Pam Lewis, Chris Street, Gabrielle Carlanda, Dr. Filani, and Joe Forgione. See, Fred's vision and willingness to go against the grain created a home where I would learn how to navigate the world, gain lifelong friendships, and not view white people as enemies, but create something with them bigger than all of us. So although I may not know Fred in the ways that some people say they know someone. I know his work. I know what he built, because I live it. And I am it, and I'm a greater person for it. Thank you. Unfortunately, my good friend Fred Newman can't be with us today, but he did send us a message through video. So without further ado, Fred Newman.